Hello friends, welcome to the journey of the lesser known temples of India. Let me take you along to some of the places that I have visited and let's discover them one by one. Let's begin with the southernmost tip of India, Kanyakumari, where the Arabian Sea, the Bay of Bengal and the Indian Ocean meet. This place was known as Cape Comorin during the British rule. We begin our journey with our first destination, Kanyakumari, and head straight to the Devi Temple, after whom the town is named. As we approach, the first thing that catches the eye is the architecture of this temple in the Dravidian style. A marvel in itself with the intricate carvings which decorate both the stone temple walls and the black stone pillars. You will certainly notice the small dome that is surrounded by the smaller cupolas. Now, to give you an excerpt from the mythological story which date back to the prehistoric Tamil era. Bansura was a very powerful demon king of this land. He practiced tapasya and obtained a boon from Lord Brahma that his death will only be at the hands of an adolescent young girl. His atrocities became unbearable. That is when Goddess Shakti appeared as a young virgin girl, Kanyakumari, and rescued the people by wiping out the evil forces championed by Banasura. It is believed that later Parasurama built this temple on the shores and installed a beautiful idol of goddess Kanyakumari. A noteworthy feature of this idol is the sparkling diamond nose ring which is said to be visible even from the sea. Legends say that light reflects off it so brightly that once an ancient mariner mistook it for a lighthouse. Sailing his ship towards the beacon, he wrecked upon the Kanyakumari rocks. To avoid such a tragedy from happening again, the eastern door of the temple is kept closed and only opened on five special occasions throughout the year. On a daily basis, only the western door is opened for entry. The temple hall, known as the Navratri Mandapam, is a place where devotees display their artistic ability in music as a dedication to the goddess. As we are in Kanyakumari, I will definitely take you to the world-famous Vivekananda Rock Memorial. Located 500 meters away from the mainland, it is a place of great scenic beauty, historical importance and religious significance. In this memorial, the Vivekananda Mandapam and Sripada Mandapam are worth visiting. As per local legend, this rock is blessed due to the belief that it has the imprint of the feet of Goddess Kumari. The Vivekananda Memorial was inaugurated in 1970 in honor of the great saint Swami Vivekananda. Before we leave this temple town, shopping in Kanyakumari 
can be a great experience as there are a range of handicraft products, seashell items and decorative pieces to choose from. We end the day with a meal featuring mouth-watering Tamil delicacies. Hope you enjoyed this journey with me. Namaskaram till we explore the next destination.